Today, I will talk about the often misunderstood but crucial concept of overhanging beams. So what exactly is an overhanging beam and why does it matter? Well, imagine a beam that extends beyond its supports, creating an overhang. Understanding the behavior of such beams is essential in various engineering and construction projects. Now let's get practical. Here are three real world applications where structural analysis of overhanging beams plays a crucial role. First is bridge construction. In bridge engineering, overhanging beams are often employed to support walkways or utility extensions. Second is building extensions. When adding extensions to existing structures, architects and engineers must assess how overhanging beams will affect the load distribution and stability of the building. Third is cantilever balconies. Cantilevered balconies are a common feature in modern architecture, providing stunning aesthetics and functional outdoor spaces. When you leave this lecture, you will learn how to plot shear force and bending moment diagram for an overhanging beam, and that will really help you understand structural analysis of such beams. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy, and examine life. In this tutorial, I will cover structural analysis of a beam with overhang. Overhanging beams are used in various applications, including balconies, aircraft wings, and other applications. By the end of this lecture, you will learn how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for a beam with overhang portion. Here, loading an overhang portion is quite huge, 6 kN per meter UDL and 12 kN point load. And on simply supported span, I just have 2 kN per meter. First step is to find out reactions. As I have a pin support at left or simple support, simple support or pin support will always have two reactions. Reactions means something which cannot move. A pin cannot move in horizontal and vertical direction. That's the reason we have horizontal and vertical reaction. So a pin is similar to if I hold a ruler like this, this ruler cannot move in vertical direction. It cannot move in horizontal direction. While a roller is like a finger where it can roll in horizontal direction, it can rotate as well, but it cannot move in vertical direction. So that's why we just have one vertical reaction at a roller support. So here we have one vertical reaction and we have to find out these reactions. Finding reaction is absolutely crucial. If we don't have reactions, then we cannot plot shear force and bending moment diagram. Shear force and bending moment diagram, they are really important because if we know shear, and bending moment, we can design a beam for bending and shear. Beam is mainly a bending element, so bending will be absolutely important as compared to shear. In normal buildings, shear isn't really much a problem. In bridges, yes, there can be problem, but in buildings, shear is not a major issue. It's bending moment that we are trying to design a beam for. But here, I will simply analyze a beam and find out shear force and bending moment diagram, which are internal forces. And then we can compare these internal forces in design part where we design a beam element. I'll be using three equilibrium equations to solve this structure, summation of horizontal forces equal to zero, summation of vertical forces equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. And this loading to clear Newton, it will have a total load of 2 times 4, it is spread on 4 meters, the so total load will be 8 kN and this uniformly distributed load, 6 kN per meter, it will be multiplied with the span which is 2 meters, so total load is 12 kN. The sign convention is vertically upward forces are positive, rightward horizontal forces are positive and clockwise moments are positive. First, let's use summation of horizontal forces equal to 0. As I only have horizontal reaction here, there are no horizontal loads applied here. So when you don't have horizontal loads, obviously the reaction is going to be zero, isn't it? That's why the reaction is zero here. Then I will say summation of moment at A equal to zero and summation of vertical forces equal to zero. When we say summation of moment at A equal to zero, this 8 kN load, which is the total load due to uniformly distributed load of 2 kN per meter. This will be acting at 
half of four meters. So half of four meter is going to be uh, two meters from left. So that's the reason we have this two meters. Two times four is the total load due to UDL. And you can see with the help of this color combination that it is this load. The second load is this one, the uniformly distributed load on overhang portion, which is six times two. And it is acting at half of this two meter distance and the distance will be five meters from here and that's the reason we multiplied five here and then we have this 12 kilonewton point load at the free end and this is six meters away from point a and vb is creating a moment as well with respect to a but this time it is creating anti-clockwise moment with respect to a so that's why we multiply four over here and that's why there's a positive sign which is missing here and if we simplify this we get vb as plus 37 kilonewton and then i will use summation of vertical forces equal to zero now vertical forces upwards are va plus vb you can see these two are positive and downward forces are this one eight kilonewton first udl and udl on the overhang portion six times two plus the point load at free end which is 12 kilonewton when we add this up we get value of va as 5 kilonewton in this way we have determined the vertical reactions now this is the complete answer where you can see all the reactions ha equal to zero vertical reaction at a is 5 kilonewton and vertical reaction at b is 37 kilonewton second step is to find out shear force diagram for finding shear force diagram i have to start from left and i simply have to add up all the vertical forces shear force is acting at perpendicular direction to the member axis to the beam axis so here at point a so when reaction is downwards downward forces are negative so that's why you see negative here then at point b but just before roller support which is this point at this point i have minus five which is reaction at a and then i will take away two times four because that is downward one so minus five minus eight it will give me minus 13 minus sign is missing over here so please add this sign and then just at point b i will simply add up this plus 34 in whatever earlier value i had earlier value i had was minus 13 and plus 37 i get 24 which is at the support and then you move to point c but just before the point load which is this point where you subtract this loading six times two so 24 take away six times two i get 12 then at point c where you will add this downward load so when you add this downward load in total you get zero shear force at the end let us see how we can plot this diagram i have values of a first i will draw these dotted lines shear force first is minus five so it will go downwards and then i have minus 13 this is minus minus is missing here so where do you think it will go obviously it will go down and then you have plus four plus 24 then it will go up and then you have 12 and then finally you have zero in this way you can plot the shear force diagram remember that this shear force diagram is crossing at this point four meters away from left to zero axis and from theory you remember that wherever we have zero shear force we will have maximum bending moment so let us see how we can plot the bending moment diagram step three is bending moment diagram first we will find moment at a which is zero because it's a pin support a pin support will always rotate this is a pin support so when you apply loading it is always going to rotate so it will not develop any moment at all that's the reason we have a as zero point c is zero as well because c is a roller support roller support means it can roll and then it can rotate as well so you can see this is this beam is rotating that's the reason it will not develop any moment at all it will be zero and at point b the shear force was zero so when you know that shear force is zero then bending moment is going to be maximum so i know that this is the position of maximum bending moment let's see how we can work this out so i have minus five into 
4 up to this point for negative sign because it is acting in anti-clockwise direction and then i have this two times four this is acting at half of four and the distance is two meters and two times four is the total load times two is the distance we get minus 36 kilonewton meter in that way this is the maximum bending moment that we can have now we have to plot this bending moment on a diagram please note that position of zero shear force is four meters and this corresponds to the maximum bending moment alternatively you can find out the maximum bending moment or bending moment at any position along the length of the beam by simply working out area under a shear force diagram so if i go back if you want to find out moment up to this point then you will work out area of this diagram from left if you want to work it out from right then you will work out area of uh, this diagram it will give you the same area no matter if you're starting from left or right or if you wanted to work out moment at this point simply this will be moment let us see how we can draw bending moment diagram first point we have zero and then b we have 36 c we have zero and then we can hatch this to make it look beautiful this is our bending moment diagram now bending moment here is negative negative means hogging moment hogging means it will be like this it means it is tension at top and compression at bottom normally for a simply supported beam you will have compression at top and tension at bottom but here we have hogging bending moment in hogging bending moment we have tension at top and compression at bottom you have really very huge loading that is causing the structure to bend in upward uh, direction this two clo newton per meter it is not uh, doing much to bring it down because the total load on the right side of roller support is huge so six times two is 12 and plus 12 which is 24 on the left side you have two times four which is eight so eight and 24 you have three times more load on the right side that's why it is causing it to deflect upwards if the loading was similar on here then it will try to bring it down and the shape uh, then should be like this but here this is not the case and you will see it in my next tutorial how do we plot diagrams for uh, these kind of beams these are the resources which i have used and specifically i've used this example from this book mckenzie examples in structure analysis Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more practical insights into structural engineering and beyond. Until next time, stay curious.